My Democrat friends, I hate to drop this on you, but God is not a Democrat. God isn't a Republican either. But the majority does not rule in God's world if they have bad rules or if they neglect what is considered good and fair. This week's Torah portion is the portion called Noah, or Noah. It talks about the flood that God brought upon mankind. What happened during the period of the flood? Well, mankind was avaricious, totally sexually over the top, where people engaged in all kinds of deviant sexual practices. And it must have been LGBTQ <clears throat> heaven, along with heaven for the all of the misogynists and all of the philanderers and all of the all of the various uh, sexual deviants. It was heaven because everybody considered it okay to do whatever you wanted, when you wanted, in whatever fashion you wanted, with whatever you wanted. So that was the time of the flood. They also believed in collectivism. They believed that your pri private property wasn't yours. We could go ahead. There should be no borders, no fences. There shouldn't be white man's rules, shouldn't be black man's rules. There should be no rules. And guess what? The majority didn't win in that, that case. God won. So you cannot have a majority who go against the rule of law. There are sensible standards that exist in this world. It's called the Judeo-Christian ethic. It's the Western ethic. It's the truth is it's the Western ethic, the ethic upon which the West was built. However, what has happened in the last 50, 60 years is questioning the ethic. Why shouldn't I be allowed to steal if you got your money stealing? How'd you get your money stealing? Well, you opened up a business and you must have stolen it because that's how you got rich. Sorry to tell you this, but business people, most business people fail. And most business people are not thieves. They didn't get rich by stealing anything from anybody. Bill Gates or the guy Zuckerberg or the guys that, are, that opened up Amazon, they didn't steal anything from anybody. They got an idea. The idea was so good that people wanted to buy the stuff. And they became very, very wealthy as a result. They didn't steal the money. Neither did most people who got wealthy. Most people go into business, they fail. They fail for a number of reasons. They don't fail because they didn't steal enough. They fail because people don't want to buy their product. They couldn't get an advertiser, enough advertisement, or there's too much competition, or they didn't work hard enough, or there's just no need for their product at this particular time. They couldn't convince enough people that their product works for them. So they failed. What happens when they fail? They lose their money. You know, look at that. But nine out of 10 people who start a business fail. The ones who are successful make a lot of money. You know what they do? They also hire a lot of people. And that's why you have a growing economy because small businesses and some big businesses are prospering and that's why they're able to feed higher, that means hire a lot of people. If you started stealing money from them by taxing them way too high, they would stop hiring other people. And in the end, they wouldn't make money and there wouldn't be people working for them. That's what happens with Toys R Us. That's what happens with 
Pan American Airways or TWA or all the great steel companies that only until recently were basically a shell of themselves. U.S. Steel was the biggest company in the world, the biggest company in America. Today it's a shell of itself, maybe able to get back into the competition for steel through Trump, but that's not what happens. We have an economy based upon merit, based upon people uh, wanting to buy things from somebody else and that person makes a profit. And because he makes a profit, he hires other people. That's life and that's, that's basically a good life. If you have a good product and you're honest about it and you have other people working for you and you pay them a good wage, most manufacturers pay great wages. I never made the kind of money that auto workers make or plumbers make or electricians make, despite the fact that I went to very many years in rabbinical school. But people make good money in this country. The fact that there are a few rich people, guess what? Those rich people contribute a lot of money to a lot of things. They couldn't afford a museum just from public policy. You have to have a few rich people like Carnegie, like Rockefeller, like Bill Gates, like some of the other people, Zuckerberg or the Koch brothers, they contribute to the public good. Sometimes they don't contribute to the public good by being political activists. That's their prerogative. Not my prerogative. I don't care that they're rich and that they got so much money. I just care that they should be good people and be successful and be able to hire a lot of other Americans. At any rate, the story of the Parsha of Noah was that you had a majority that was evil, that believed in taking whatever they wanted, and doing whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. Well, it was evil because it was misogyny. Who says? Maybe the women agreed with it. But the women were also culprits in that process because you can't have a society that has no standards of modesty, that has no standards of what to do, when to do, and how to do in a way that's modest, in a way that's becoming. Human sexuality primarily is for, primarily is for the purpose of procreation so that there be children for the next generation. Free sex, free love, no restrictions on it, and no restrictions on abortion are immoral. That's what the Torah says. You don't like it, argue with God. You can't argue with God, of course, but you can create a society that you want. But ultimately, the point of this week's Torah portion is majority can only rule if the rules are just. Majorities shouldn't rule and won't be able to rule if their rules are unjust. Abortion happens to be an evil. Abortion is the taking of a life. It's an unborn life, yes. So it's not murder, but it's very close to murder, especially done when the child is viable in the last trimester. And that happens a lot in this country. Whether you like it or not, that's what happens. And it's immoral and close to murder. And there's a lot of other stuff that's prohibited. Taking things from somebody else for no reason, no good reason overburdening people with taxation because you're jealous that that person is wealthy, that's an evil. I hate to tell you this, that's an evil. The Torah is not interested in equal outcomes. The Torah is interested in equal opportunities. The Torah is in interested in equal treatment before the law. And that is what you have. You have one of the most, the most wonderful country that God has ever created with all of its warts and all of its flaws. They were not misogynists when they wrote the Constitution. That was the practice. Women did not vote. Guess what? People who didn't have property couldn't vote. And I'll tell you why. The rational makes a lot of sense. You should not be able to vote if you don't have something in the game. You can't play poker if you don't chip into the ante. If you don't have property, and most taxes were on property, then what right do you have to vote? You're gonna go ahead and tell me 
that you're going to tax me because you want to me, to me to be taxed because you're jealous of the fact that I got property and you don't. That's called jealousy, jealousy politics. True politics should be that we all have skin in the game. If you don't have an incentive to work, you shouldn't be allowed to tell me that I should pay for you not working. If you're in jail for a crime, you shouldn't have a voice in how you should be treated, very simply because you violated the standards of the community. You should be treated fairly, but it shouldn't be your choice, or you shouldn't have part of the choice of determining the policy, how to deal with criminals and crime. That should be for the citizens who have to protect themselves against you. So these are policies that the Democrats support. They support giving voting rights to criminals, support open immigration, where people go ahead and come and they flood the country and take over the social welfare system and flood the educational system with incredible costs. You have to, somebody's got to pay for it. You can't say tax the rich. There's enough money among the rich to pay for all of these things. The only way to pay for these things is if you have a good economy, where there are some rich people who open up businesses and they hire lots and lots of people who make good wages. And the only thing that's important isn't how much money Bill Gates has or the Koch brothers have or Donald Trump has. Most important thing is how much money do you have? Can you pay your rent? Can you buy a car? Can you go on a vacation? The answer is yes, and you're living well. We live better today than we ever lived before. We have advantages that nobody else has had. No kings in the Middle Ages had air conditioning, nor did they have cars that could go at 80, 90 miles an hour. No kid and, and no privileged child had the kind of education we have. No kid in the, in, in, in the ancient world could have a life expectancy that approaches ours. Most kids died as children, even if they were princes and princesses. They died of measles, mumps, all different kinds of stuff that we've got vaccines for today. We live very well in this country. This is the greatest country that God has ever created. That's a fact. The fact that there were uh, prejudices, there still are prejudices, so we've got to work to fix it. Most of those prejudices that you have are really just the politics of the left, not reality. Reality is, is that most people look at other people as people and should, you should be judged by the knowledge you have, the quality of your work, the ethics that you have, the kind of person you are, not your religious background, not the color of your skin, not where you come from, and not even the party you vote for. Everything should be dependent upon the character of the person. Nothing more, nothing less. That's what God taught in this week's Parsha. So yes, we like majority rule if the rules are just.